What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Who Want a Life Sentence. I appreciate you guys for coming, tapping in with me, spending a, a few minutes. You know, we're going to uh, try to have us a good time. Um, But guess what? Today, today I ain't even putting that whip stick on nobody's ass. I ain't, I ain't frying nobody up. Today, we just going to do a, uh, we just going to do story time. You know, honestly, I like coming here. I'm trying to get over a little cold. I like coming here, uh, talking with you guys. It's therapeutic. It helps me out. Um, hopefully it'll help some of y'all out. Um, don't make the same bad decisions that I made. I've been to prison twice. Um, I fucked up my record. So all in all, we want to, um, we want to try to learn something. Um, what I said I was going to start doing is I'm going to start picking, you know, I can't go back and forth with all the comments and all the haters. So I'm just going to start picking one and responding to it. And then we move on like that. Uh, so today is going to be David Bindle, 7919. Thanks, but I don't want to watch this mess. Well, be my guest to get your monkey ass on. No one's tying you down to stay here. Feel free to exit whenever you choose, uh, Mr. Bendel. Don't get your ugly user here. Thanks. Okay, so today we're going to talk about... Um, the time I got got by them free band niggas, uh, and, and now I can't say it was it was really twice, but for me it feel like I had been got down on twice. But um, so if you if you if you not if you if you not from Atlanta, I know. Oh, and and, and before we do that, big shout out to Melissa Hill. You know, uh, still my number one supporter. Thank you, sweetie. You know, we you know, we both know what I'm talking about. I really appreciate that. You again, y'all, she the reason why I'm on here right now. If it weren't for that, man, I would have went on and done something else, you know. Uh anyway, around the around, I'ma say about 2008, 2009, that was when the free band, um, the free band movement was on the rise now if you from atlanta you know this but if you're not from atlanta then you might not know this but the free band era was you know actually more than just a a, a record label and and future it was you know it was a, a click of niggas like uh in the kirkwood area with the fofo boys and uh the free band niggas they would they had a method to how they was getting money. They might, no matter what they was, was buying, whether it was pounds of weed or whatever else, you know, they spend with you one or two times. And then them niggas would, you know, come once, once you know, y'all establish a trust. Once you come spend on the third or fourth time, or once you finally up your, you know, you go from buying a half a pound to two pounds, you know, them niggas, you, everybody trustworthy, them niggas run out with your money. This what free band was. It was, it was really running off. I didn't, I, uh, I, I known about three of them niggas that, that used to tell me stories about, you know, how they used to run off with people money. That, that what free band was. That's anyway, that's how, that's how it was told to me anyway. So, <clears throat> um, just doing my dealings through the street. At this time, I'm selling a little weed or trying to win away. I'm selling a little weed. Uh, I meet Fat. Fat is in the, I think one of them, like the Hit Squad Mafia or, or some shit like that. They had up uh, 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 top Clayton County, like Lovejoy, uh, McDonough area. You know, um, like, like that right there. So, um, I met Fat. Fat told me he had it. 
I go to shopping with him. I shop with him about three or four times. And, you know, the, the same way he had been saying, the same way I was saying, I had developed a relationship with him. The the treat the 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 weed were good. Uh, you know, he was a cool nigga. He was, you know, young nigga had the dreads. I didn't see I, I to be honest, I didn't see nothing shaky about him. So, you know, it was a, a pretty good relationship. Um and you know, at that time I was buying probably about like a, a cutie or, or, or you know, a cutie, if you know, you know. So I called him up one day and I let him know, I let him know that, uh, you know, I needed to re up. And I remember specifically that he charged me, he was charging me like 300. I was getting uh, the, the cutie, the, the cutie was 300. So I'm like, cool. I had to borrow like $270 from, uh, my baby mama because it was on her payday. I ain't had no job. But I had been probably, you know, doing my thing and flipping and flipping to the point where I needed a cutie and needed to go ahead and get it, right? So, you know, she arguing and crying. I mean, you know, not crying, but just whining. And you know how girls do bitching about it. And when I'm going to get my money back and I'm making guarantees. Like, look, I got this waiting on, he waiting on this, he waiting on that. I get the money right back, such and such. She like, cool. She give me the little 270 and I, I can't remember if I had my son or not at the time, but I must have had. So he probably was in the back seat in the car seat. So, and they ride with me when I go, when I call and, and you know, we do everything at one time. She go to pick up her check. I call fat, let fat know, Hey, I'm ready. I need to come see you. He tell me to come on. So I got my baby mama in the car and the kids in the car. Man, we get over there, and uh, the crazy thing is, like, right before we got to his apartment, we over on, uh, on, on Terra Boulevard, one, on one of them apartments up 138. And right before we got to his apartment, she was like, um, man, what if, um, she was like, don't, she said, she said some real, real, some real rookie, like, like, uh, don't give him the money, you know, before he give you the product or, or some crazy like that. That really just kind of aggravated me because it was saying like, I didn't know what I'm doing or, and then not only that, I, I, I really trust him. I didn't dealt with him before. I ain't got no reason to not. Right. So her telling me that just aggravated me. So as soon as she said that, I explode on her like, man, don't say no shit like that. Not only is that not true, but you don't want to bring that kind of them them bad vibes to a situation, you know, um, uh, uh, jinx the situation. You don't want to just talk bad, uh, like 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 when you when you hitting licks and out there doing your dirt. You don't want to talk about police and being in jail. You know, it's it's that kind of situation. So I explode on her. Don't 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 man. Don't talk. Don't don't say nothing about. Don't don't say nothing like that. She like all right, cool. When I pull up to the apartment, I pull up to the one that he direct me to. Fat come out of the apartment and get in my back seat. Now I'm driving my baby mom over here, my son in the back. He get in the back with my son, you know, I'm, and he, he reaches his hand through the middle and he got, you know, big ass nugget in his hand and showed me what it, and, you know, I grab it out of his hand. And I'm looking at it. He like, that what it is right there. Now them motherfuckers look good. I'm talking about, and this before all that good exotic stuff came out, um, all the, all that it, it was just really really good mid you know what i mean uh or it was like when the perp and, and kush was out so that shit bye i'm like oh hell yeah that's it right there he's like yeah that that what that what i got i'm like shit bet take the 300 i give it to him he get out the car he like all right i'll be right back he walk up the um he walk up the the gangway I don't see which way he go. I don't see which way he go once he get to the top. We sitting there. We've been sitting there about five minutes. To be honest, I ain't, you know, I really not thinking that nothing. You know, sometimes it take a little minute. I look at her. I already know what she thinking. 
And the crazy part is, for her to be right, that's that hurt more than anything. That hurt more than this nigga running off with my money, more than me not getting the for her to be right in this situation when she supposed to be a total square. Um I look at her, she looking at me. So about 10 minutes go by. About 15 minutes go by. Now I'm starting to get worried, right? I call nigga phone, he don't pick up. When that nigga don't pick up that phone on that very, very first call, like there's a feeling that go through a nigga that 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 it like it's it's enraging and it's like yo it, it's almost like being told uh your mama ain't coming to get you for the weekend no more. It's just a a total letdown. Like oh like. It just it just ruined everything. Like, oh man, you feel like a little kid. You call the nigga the first time and he don't pick up, he go to voicemail, you like, no, I know this nigga ain't. Wait for a minute or two. Cause this nigga got my money, so you don't want to piss him off. You don't want to keep calling a nigga phone and get him a reason, like, nigga, then nah, nah, you I done been through all the bullshit, right? Get this nigga a minute to call back. Been five minutes, he don't call back. Call nigga again. He don't pick up the phone. I'm like, damn, bro. I just, I know this nigga ain't played with me like this, man. Because at this time, like, I'm fresh out of prison. I've been out of prison maybe a year or so. And I'm still totally 100% on go. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm down for whatever. I'm like, man, I know this nigga ain't played with me like this. She ain't saying that, you know. But we both thinking, I told you so. I told your dumb ass, right? Man, we might have sat out there two hours. I'm calling nigga phone, I'm texting. I'm calling nigga phone, I'm texting. And, you know, I know, like, the weird part is, I think at one point the nigga started sending me a text back or something more. I might have text something that touched this nerve and the nigga sent something that said, uh, ha ha, like, like something laughing to the phone that let me know, you know what I mean? Which made me look at departments and know that wherever he was, he was somewhere watching me. He was somewhere watching me. He just done took my money and bent a little corner. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because I'm thinking, damn, niggas will play with their life about two or three hundred dollars. And, and and it's true, they will. But this is what you get when you're dealing with the people in the shadows and the the strange figures and the devils and the demons and so on. So uh man, I probably stayed out there about three hours. We go on to leave. Go on to leave, go to the house. I'm heartbroken. She heartbroken, but I gotta get her money back. You know, it just, it just a, a total situation is a, a is a complete failure. I feel, I feel so foolish. You know, and sometimes when stuff happen like this, you go to feeling like, man, what did I do to deserve this? Because at that time, I ain't gonna lie, I probably had done screw some people over. So you know, it is what it is. So, um, I want to say either. By the end of that year or the following year, uh, tax return time had came around. And when tax return time came around, I remember I was up a couple grand, maybe three or four grand. And um, my homeboy Sleepy called me. Sleepy called me and uh, just out of nowhere, I think he had the whip. He had the whip. You got to remember, we were young. We were, well, no, nah, I can't say that because we owned whips. Uh, but for whatever reason, I, I was sleepy that day. I, I can't I can't quite remember what it was, but I was sleep. And we was in the, I think we was in the, the Brown Capri. Um, uh, and that was Matt Capri. Um, Matt Dollar. So, <clears throat> I tell, uh, I remember I seen a, a four-wheeler up outside the pawn shop, right? And I probably couldn't afford it, but you know, when you got a couple grand in your pocket, you think, you know, you look at everything. So 
you know, uh, I tell bro, I need, I want to pull in there and go look at the four wheeler. He like, cool. He need to go to AutoZone anyway. So sleep pull in and he go and park at AutoZone. I get out and I walk over to the pawn shop. I'm in there. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it around. It look good. Uh, they wanted it and I could afford it, but it would have drained my pocket, right? But I'm still looking at it. I'm talking to the, the white dude about it. He telling me about it. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm thinking about it. Like I might, I might, I might actually go on and snack that thing, right? So I'm actually feeling kind of good. I'm, I'm feeling kind of good because I'm feeling like I done made my decision. Like I'm, so I'm, I'm actually I come out the out the pawn shop kind of like, you know, bopping in a, in a good mood. I'm finna skip over here and tell sleep like, bro, I'm, I'm get that more. I might even put a couple dollars down on it or something, right? So as I'm going to the auto zone, I'm passing the back of a Honda. When I pass the back of a Honda, it's a nigga got the it's his, it's a nigga at sitting at the Honda at the at the driver at the front wheel, the front driver wheel, look like you know he doing whatever working on it. And I notice him from the dreads. Either how he had the dreads pent up or whatever was going on, I noticed that is fat. So I'm skipping, you know, I'm skipping, not not skipping, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm strolling by the nigga and I seen him and I don't say nothing. And I take and I back up like two steps. Now this is is where I fucked up. You know, this is, you know, everybody, anybody to tell you this, uh, you know, if if there's a situation, plus like I said, I was on go at the time. Um all that mouth running and you know if you got something to do, the best thing to do is to go on and do it. That's just the bottom line. If that's how you living, that's the bottom line. All that talking about and all that ain't it ain't time for none of that. It, you how look you that's how that's how you live, right? So and what happened is I had done got caught up because I had just like I said, not too long ago, I had done just put the whipstick ass on nigga at the fucking uh at the BP. I had just beat a nigga down the death up there. So I probably still had the big head or whatever. Um, so I took a couple steps back and I, it, like, I, I just couldn't believe it. I remember that. Re I remember what was going through my head. Like I couldn't believe that it was him. It was him right here in front of me. This same nigga took my money, ran off his head. He's literally sitting right in front of me about six or seven feet. I said his name. I'm like, fat. Nigga turned around and looked. And like he he looked, he turned around and looked at me like this, but he couldn't see. Then he did his hair back like that. You know them nigga got them dread. Throw the hair back like that. Like, who? Bro, who are that? So, like I said, I was looking for him to respond. And when I called his name, that was the response. So once I called his name and he turned around. I'm like I'm I'm in disbelief. I I go to walking back and forth because in my mind I'm finna I'm so in my mind I'm saying, oh shit man I'm finna goddamn take a step or two and goddamn smash the nigga ass right in their face right. So soon as he say who that is I'm like oh shit boy I can't believe it. As soon as I'm saying that I'm getting ready to step towards this nigga. This nigga jump up run around the car and. Like once he started running, I kind of like I, I I'm I'm taking steps for towards him, but I stopped because he running and I don't want to be outside chasing no nigga. So he running around the car, so I stop and I'm watching this nigga go to the passenger seat, pull out a gun, man. So I'm talking about he pulled out the smoke pole. Soon as he pulled that motherfucker got like my 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 heart got down and exploding in my chest. You know, it's being so hard, it feel like this shit finna stop on you know what I mean? Now my whole intentions done really changed. Really, I'm just I'm wishing that I was not here. I'm wishing I was somewhere else on the earth right now. Nigga pull out them off, pull out smoke pole, cock it, and nigga, and he starts screaming. They gonna be walking up on me like that. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. Don't be walking up on me like that. And my heart finna goddamn stop, and I'm apologizing. I'm having a heart attack at the same time, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." And 
like the the more bitch made I become, the more confident he get. He done start walking around the car now and got them doing that same screaming shit. Like nigga, don't be a nigga. I do this. I do that. Nigga, don't ever walk up on me. Nigga, fuck wrong with you. So I'm like, damn. So now I'm realizing he ain't gonna do nothing to me. He gonna let me go. I'm backing up, but my homeboy is still sleep still at AutoZone. He done ran out, and he just standing right on the sidewalk. He froze. He ain't got no pole. Uh, and there's a lady from AutoZone. She was standing right there. She watching, too. She done started calling his name. <coughs> Fat. <coughs> Fat. Fat. Put it down, Fat. So now Fat done got down. Well, he walking back to put it back in his car, but he's still watching me. Nigga, I'm, I'm backing up, and I'm still watching him. I'm going on up the parking lot. I'm just hoping this nigga don't change his mind and go on and let off a shot, right? Trying to get sleepy attention. I get attention. I'm like, bro, let roll. Let, let go. I get to walking. Sleep got there. I'm getting in the car. He rolled up and picked me up. So now my adrenaline, damn. Now my adrenaline rushing rushing bad and i'm like i i really i want some get back i like at, at this moment in time right now i want to retaliate but <clears throat> which i don't advise against that this is what i'm telling you with a a, a, a level head because what i did would have been considered premeditated you know anything i had done after i left because so when i jump in the whip i tell sleep Bro, go to D house, cause I know D got a gun over there. I tell him go to D house, cause I know D got a gun over there. Oh, uh, we get to the light, bro. I don't even get in the, in the turning lane, and the whole time, you know, I'm in the car, had been talking like, man, I know that I'm finna kill this fuck nigga. This nigga just pulled this goddamn pole out on me, nigga. On the, nah, nah. And he had been asking me, like, who was that? And I'm like, bro, that was fat. That a nigga I had been told you about ran off on me, bro. That puss ass nigga, this, this, that, that. I should have just fired on that nigga. I was talking and this, this, this. But he supposed to be getting in the fucking turning lane while I'm talking so we can go to D house. We can grab a pistol. I'm thinking we can grab a pistol and you gonna bring me back up here and he wouldn't get in the turning lane. I'm looking at bro like, bro. And he wouldn't look at me. He just kept looking straight. And when the light turned green, nigga kept driving straight. But, you know, at this time, I know it's going to be over. Because, bro, he probably going to clear out of the area. You know what I mean? He probably going to clear out from AutoZone up there. So, really, you really fucking up my chances. Which, not knowing, that was a good thing. Because had he took me to get a gun, then brought me back up here. I got up both a murder charge. You know what I'm saying? Both have been in that motherfucker right now. Right now. So, well, maybe he'd have been out, but I'd have still been in. You know what I mean? Right? Or maybe I'd have been. I don't know. You know, no, nah, I'd have been there. I'd still been in. So, uh, so boom. So instantly when bro, when bro, when bro keep riding under the green, like, I just stop talking. I sit in the green. I sit in, I, I sit in the passenger seat. I tell him to sleep. I'm like, bro, take me home. He don't say that. But he go and, you know, start heading toward my house. So, uh, that was the end of that, man. I, I ain't never seen Fat again. Um, um, matter of fact, one thing he said while he was doing all that screaming, he was talking about, uh, uh, he had got shot by my punk ass 270, some niggas. Then he turned around and pulled his shirt up and showed a bullet wound. But that bullet wound couldn't been no shit that he got shot about. And, uh, you know, he was just screaming some shit. But I, I tell you what, if the niggas was, was, was out there shooting and uh, acting crazy towards your little retarded ass, I know why you running off with people money and then we need no big money. So... You were bringing that kind of shit on yourself, fat. Um, but yeah, y'all, man, that my story for the day. I, I, su I suggest y'all don't do. I, I took a double loss. Uh, nigga ran off with my money. Then I ain't even get my revenge on him, get the whoop on his ass, cause uh, I was fucking around and running my mouth, and the nigga made it to the gun before I could get to his ass. 
So I, I took a double win, man, and 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 I, and I never ran into a fat again, and I I never wanted to run. And understand that this was like 2007, 2008. So we talking about. 18, like, one, two, three. We talking about 15 years ago. So, I don't want no smoke, no problem with your little punk ass fat fuck nigga. Hey, I appreciate y'all for tapping in, man. Hit the cash up. We gonna, we gonna keep this thing coming.